Hi, I'm Reid Kirkenbauer with InvestAsian.com here on Nomad Capitalist. Singapore is one of Asia's top success stories. After being kicked out from the Malaysian Federation in 1965, Singapore went on to become one of the wealthiest nations in the entire world and now has a GDP per capita roughly six times of that of Malaysia. Singapore is not for everyone though, and while it is truly a great place to grow and preserve your wealth, there are some very positive aspects to investing in Singapore and some negatives. Here, I'll tell you all about it. Now, most people who want to invest in Singapore either want to buy stocks in the country or real estate. I'll talk about Singapore's stock market first. Through opening a brokerage account in Singapore, which is possible to do remotely, by the way, you can not only trade stocks in Singapore, but those all throughout the region. See, one of the unique aspects about Singapore is that it serves as a springboard of sorts to other frontier and emerging markets in the region. Asia is practically the only continent in the world where you have emerging markets sitting next to frontier markets, sitting next to fully developed economies. Europe, for example, has a lot of developed countries, some emerging markets, but not really any frontier markets. Likewise, South America and Africa have a lot of frontier markets, a lot of emerging markets, but no really developed economies. Asia, on the other hand, has emerging markets such as Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, sitting next to frontier markets like Laos and Cambodia, next to fully developed economies such as Singapore, Japan, and Hong Kong. And because of this, the growth prospects of frontier and emerging markets are able to supplement the international standards of places like Singapore and Hong Kong very well. Money is able to flow into Singapore very effectively and then feed into frontier markets, which not only, of course, helps the development of frontier markets in the region, but also helps Singapore grow more than otherwise would if there were not uh, developing economies in the region for it to play off of, so to speak. So Singapore serves as a springboard for capital to flow into the region, along with Hong Kong, which Hong Kong is increasingly becoming, playing a second fiddle next to Singapore. Those are the two main financial centers in Singapore where international capital flows through. Now, if you want to open a brokerage account in Singapore, you can do that remotely and by mail under the right circumstances. But when you have a brokerage account in Singapore, you aren't just able to invest in Singaporean stocks. You can buy stocks in Indonesia, Philippines, all, all of Asia's emerging and frontier markets, the very least a lot of the larger ones. In places like Indonesia, Vietnam, Philippines, Malaysia, Thailand, all of those are very difficult to access if you don't have a brokerage account in Singapore or somewhere in Asia. You can't, for example, trade in any of those countries with an interactive broker's account. As much as I like interactive brokers as a general brokerage account, it is kind of limited, especially when it comes to trading stocks in Asia. You only really have access to Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea, and that's about it. So if you want to trade stocks in Asia's emerging and frontier markets, opening a brokerage account is a great way to do so. And of course, you have access to stocks in Singapore itself. Many of those are of companies based within Singapore, some of the country's largest banks, DBS, OCBC, UOB, which all rank within the world's 20 most stable banks. And in addition to that, you can invest in other countries through the Singapore Stock Exchange. For example, one of my favorites is the Ascendus India Trust, which is one of the only ways to invest in India's property market, since foreigners cannot buy property in India on a freehold basis. So by opening a brokerage account in Singapore and gaining access to its market, you can invest all over Asia, and I think it's truly a great asset to have. On the other hand, there's property in Singapore as well. Now, real estate prices in Singapore have skyrocketed over the past 10, 20 years. And today, Singapore's real estate market is one of the most expensive in the world at about 20,000 US dollars per square meter. This is about double that of New York City or London. So real estate prices in Singapore are very expensive. And if you do want to invest in Singapore's real estate market, the caveat is that it does not come with a low entry price. You'll need to bring a fair amount of capital if you want to buy property property in Singapore. Now, just because real estate in Singapore is expensive does not necessarily make it a bad deal. People have, of course, for the past 10 years, they've been saying, oh, real estate prices in Singapore are, like I just said, the most expensive in the world, and they've just kept rising and rising and going up. So just because they're expensive does not necessarily mean that 
prices are going to decrease in the future or that it's a bad investment. In fact, to the contrary, and since 2020, prices in Singapore have been very stable as capital seeks a safe place to go. Wealthy expats and, well, just wealthy people in general, millionaires, billionaires from China and India are increasingly looking at Singapore as a safe haven to store their wealth. And because of Singapore's limited land size, it's a city-state that's about 20 kilometers or so in diameter. It's, um, you know, there's not much space in Singapore. So by nature of more people moving into Singapore, increased demand for real estate and limited space, all of that means that real estate in Singapore could see a very bright future ahead as far as appreci appreciation potential goes. Rental yields, on the other hand, are rather low at about two or three percent on average. And after costs, and maintenance and repairs, you might be getting practically nothing, especially if you aren't living in Singapore and need to hire a property manager. So it's very much an appreciation play like many other real estate markets in Asia. So for all of those reasons, Singapore truly is an emerging hub of global wealth and will almost surely see continued demand over the long term, whether with regards to investing in property or setting up a brokerage account and buying stocks in Singapore and throughout the region. So if you want to invest in one of the world's top global financial centers are seeking a certain level of stability for your investments, and in the case of real estate, at least, have a large amount of capital with at the very least a few million dollars to invest, then Singapore might be the right place for you.